everyone. My name is Sandhya. And my name is Swapna. And, and we're, we're the, the Steam, Steam Sisters. Sisters. Welcome to Steam Stars. Where we're going to meet all the amazing women behind science and technology, engineering, art, and math, and everything in between. Today, we're going to meet with animal wrangler Jordan Worrell. Let's go! Hi, I'm Jordan Worrell, and I'm an animal wrangler. Hey, hey Jordan, it's so awesome to meet you. We are so stoked to be here. Indeed. Welcome to my farm. All right, we're going to ask you, Jordan, to describe your job as an animal wrangler in 10 words. You ready? Okay. Uh, crazy, uh -huh. uh, animal, movie, television, uh -huh. uh, superstar, training, poop, <laughs> uh, messy, and rewarding. Oh. So what is it exactly that an animal wrangler does on a typical day? My day varies, it's never the same. That's part of what I love about this job. Uh, it can be everything from doing work on the farm and taking care of the animals here to doing training and preparation work, mm -hmm. all the way to taking our animal actors and movie stars to set to do their jobs. We know that you work with horses, obviously, yeah. but what are some other animals that you work with? Uh, so in my line of work, I work with everything from tiny bugs like maggots wow. all the way up to lions and tigers. <laughs> wow. Um, so Neat. we do lots of fun, crazy bug work, uh, cockroaches, spiders, <gasps> um, ants, and flies are some of my favorites. Um, and then on the more exotic sort of fun things, I'm a licensed falconer, so birds of prey, um, owls, hawks, as well as the ravens that we have here. Um, and then I'm partnered with a few zoos, so we use some of their tigers and lions as well. We're wondering where in your training of the animals or in the managing of behavior on set do you use the science of animal behavior and communication? Some tactile responses when you're working with horses, using pressure and your hands and your feet to explain to them what you're looking for. Um, Chemical-wise, we use uh, ur urines or scent glands, that sort of thing, when working with big predators in order to lure them to different areas and get them to respond in different environments. Visually, we use hand signals when we can't use verbal cues to be able to make sure that animals understand what we're asking. Auditory mm -hmm. is obviously verbal cues. Yeah. So right. rewards, um, being able to tell the animal that they've done the right thing, and then also to cue for things. I am going to show you a couple examples of how we use visual, auditory, and then food as a stimulus um, when training a dog. Up, down, speak, good, bang. So one of the ways that we motivate animals is to use food. Um, so, just a simple demonstration of how we do that. <laughs> and what we're going to ask you to do is to draw your inspiration. Okay. Anything that has inspired you in the past or something that still inspires you. And we're going to try and guess what it means. Today, the moon, cheese. <laughs> this is my inspiration for working with animals. When I was 11, I saved up all my birthday money and I bought a parrot off oh. of the internet. <laughs> and uh, when I got her home, we realized very quickly um, that she had been quite abused. She was living in a, a cage that was really too small. I learned through her how to help an animal through all of that. And um, that's where kind of the learning and the training and the compassion end of things kind of comes from. The earth is because I knew um, from a young age that I wanted to do something that had impact. Yeah. Um, that meant something to people just outside of my own circle uh, across the world. What's the strangest thing that you've ever been asked to do? I had one project ask if we could train a pug to ride a horse that was acting as a unicorn. So we had to build a custom little saddle fitting. Oh. You can't just tie a pug on a horse and yeah. slide right underneath. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we built a little chair for him and uh, that worked out pretty well. What's the best part of your job? Um, the days where things happen in one take, <laughs> super quick. The animal just absolutely wows everybody and they nail it on their first shot. Those are the great days, for sure. So we did hear about your cats, Astro and Fox, who were starring 
in a, an Oscar-winning movie, The Shape of Water. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So Astro is my cat. She lives here with me. And Fox oh. belongs to a friend of mine. She was cast because we needed a cat to hiss on camera. Um, and Astro is a true diva to her core. Uh, and when she's on set, she doesn't like to share the limelight with anybody. And so if you introduce another cat into the situation, um, then she'll let you know how she feels about it. We bring a cat in over top, and she lets them know that this is her space, not theirs. <laughs> and she hisses. So, and she hisses, yeah. <laughs> If I could give uh, childhood me one piece of advice, it would be don't let anybody else tell you how to get to where you want to go. Yeah. That your dreams are your dreams and that your path is right no matter how you get there. Just because that's not the way that other people are doing things doesn't mean that it's the way that you have to do it. So, where do sheep get their haircut? Where? At the Baha Baha shop. <laughs> she quacks me up. <laughs>